I'll start, man. So, uh, as Snedge just said there, he gave me Meryl Streak Suicide. So, Meryl Streak is a self-described Dublin-based avant-garde punk. Um, from what I remember last time, Snedge, Suicide was the last single released from his debut album, 796, which was released just towards the end of last year on the 4th of November on Venn Records. Particularly like the kind of album cover, because it reminded me a bit of an amalgamation of the distiller Sing Sing Death House, Dead Kennedys and God We Trust and No Effects is The Decline. Um, the song itself is just over four minutes long. It kind of opens with these kind of quivering, pulsating electronics um, before we're kind of greeted to this kind of exasperated, kind of guttural howl from Streak at about the kind of 20-second mark. And this kind of helps set the tone for the, the kind of rest of the song and almost kind of foreshadows what's to come with the introduction of Streak's kind of lyrics. Um, he kind of has these kind of spoken word lyrics that kick in just after the kind of 30 second mark. The lyrics themselves um, are kind of loaded with emotion. They're kind of delivered with quite a lot of kind of venom and vitriol. He sings in a kind of broad Dublin Irish accent and the lyrical content itself kind of deals with I suppose the current economic situation that kind of many are facing just now so kind of talks about bills having to cycle to work every day in the pishing rain just to keep the heating on having to still live with his parents because there's you know men in suits or dickheads with suits I think is maybe the lyric uh, out there stuffing cash into their pockets and they're setting the agenda which means that he can't get any house and and I'm you know I'm being quite flippant about it but I don't I don't mean to be you know because the the song obviously kind of deals with the kind of impact that that then has on people's mental health and the the name the sorry the song itself is quite aptly named suicide and this is something that's kind of touched on within the lyrical content with the lyric I have a strong heart for anyone who has left us early in this life and I think that's repeated twice before there's a bit of a kind of pause or a kind of tonal change in the song with this introduction of a kind of trad tin whistle slash flute which you know doesn't feel out of place um or contrived and i've written here if anything it almost gives the song kind of pause for reflection because knowing what we know about kind of mental health and suicide it's um yeah this, this is when people feel trapped by the circumstances uh, is when people take their lives and yeah i kind of felt that you know the introduction of the tin whistle the flute it, it almost helps kind of i i don't know it's it kind of punctuates you know the kind of emotion of the song mm. the guitar sounds really good as well um and then the second half of the song there's female vocals brought in uh, she's kind of singing in irish i don't know you know what, what, what she's kind of singing about but i googled the meaning so i just found the lyrics and put them into google translate so it's by no means a perfect translation but something like now everything is always broken something mm. like that which which you know fits the, the theme of the song yeah and there's there's a kind of strong tradition in irish in Ireland, isn't there, of kind of women singing at weddings? Um, not weddings, what am I talking about? Fucking weddings on my mind just now. So singing at funerals and banshees. You've heard of kind of banshees before. We've kind of got them in Scottish tradition as well. That normally signal signal the death of, mm. of, of someone. So I wonder if that's... I wonder if there's kind of some reasoning behind that there. I don't know. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Thinking on my feet here, Sned, so I'm not sure. But yeah, overall, I, I really love the song. Um, and I, I think it's quite good to see more of this type of stuff. You know what I mean? Because it's it's, topic, it's topical. You know what I mean? Me and you both, I think, one of the last times that we sat down, I can't remember whether it was to kind of discuss the one of the podcasts or maybe one of the interviews or whatever, but we were kind of moaning about how expensive it is to just heat your house just now. Yeah. You know what I mean? At the like me and me and Kerry are comfortable. We're both out working, but I mean, our last bill cost us what three hundred and nineteen pound, and that was with the help from the government. You know, what I mean, you get I can't can't remember how much you get towards it, but it knocked a fair chunk off. But the bills are due up due to go up again probably the next couple of months, and then again towards the end of the year. Like, how, how are people expected to pay that? 
you know what I mean? And that's just that's just your electricity bills. So yeah, I think it's I think more of this stuff. You know, this needs to be said. It needs to be addressed. And it's yeah, it's good. What what score did you give it? I gave it a ten out of ten. Oofed. I've gone a nine out of ten, but um, I I I, lo- I love this song. I mean, I think when I gave it to you, I, I, I compared it to stuff like Idols and Fontaine's DC. Idols because of that sort of low end drive and the aggression of the vocals, and Fontaine's DC partly because of the accent, um, but yeah. also because of the the sort of the the sort of personal and sort of intimate lyrics, and you know they're they're quite poetic as well. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I like I like how thuggish that vocal scream is that comes in right at the start of the song. It's almost like hardcore punk, and and then it's just you know there's this um, kicking drum beat that couples with this like sort of dark electronic groove um, alongside this clean melancholic guitar, and it's you know just really atmospheric, but at the same time it's it's really catchy. And, you know, those vocals are really engaging. They're sort of shouted and growled a bit like Joe Talbot, but, you know, you've got that more measured poetic delivery, more akin to somebody like Grant Chatton. So really cool song. You, you picked out some of those lyrics. I think the opening lyric of the song that just goes mind constantly banging side to side like a game of pinball, pinball. Is, um, is, a, is, is, is a really good way to start it as well but there's you know there's heaps of vocal lines that you could you could pull out of this song that, that, that hit really hard especially that that one about having a, a strong heart for anyone who's left us early in this life so yeah I, I, I love this song and I would also urge anyone who, who who likes this song to go out and check the album, check out the album Seven Nine Six because it's also very very good. So you've given a ten out of ten, so we need to like sell some fireworks or something. It has to go into <laughs> it has to go into the Hall of Fame. Definitely, we still need to get that big uh, golden buzzer that we keep talking Just about. Need like a like an ear horn or something, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's great for. We'd neighbors. have we'd, no. We'll have to kind of review when when we start recording. I think if we're going to be setting off ear horns left, right, and centre. But uh, anyway, so that was Meryl Suicide Street. by Meryl Streak. Cycling to work every day in the pissing rain just to try keep the heat on. Dickheads in suits. And I've nowhere to live because of their agenda And I've got a strong heart for anyone Who has left us early in this life And speak from your heart Because it's the only one you got in this world We've done finished Finish.